Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf Hayyami Meseches Chulin Daf Kuf Chaf Aleph. We begin on the second line off the top. So back to the Mishnah where the, the Tana, the Mishnah listed some items which, although on their own, by their own right, are not really considered legitimate, you know, food material. But they can be counted in. In order to achieve, so if you add them in with food, you can you count them in to achieve the um, the minimum you know shiur requirement, which is a kabetza, uh, eggs worth of material, in order to be susceptible to becoming tummy tumas oichlan tumen that applies to food. Now, some items in the Mishnah were considered a shomer, right? Something which guards, which shields, protects the food material beneath it or alongside it, and that gives the uh, the shomer. Um, so, so, sort of food status with respect to joining together to achieve the shiur. In, in some cases, it isn't, you know, a shimer. It's more that this really is not. It's not food or not non-food. It's sort of sort of pseudo food. It's in between. <laughs> it's something as Rashi says, you wouldn't eat on its own. A little sinews, a little. But you know, when it's together with the. Uh, they like to make uh, you know salami, bologna. They just pile in all kinds of you know things that you wouldn't eat on the toe. But when it's together, mixed together, you would eat it on account of the food alongside it. So due to that, it, it does get some somewhat of food status. And uh, if it's uh, together with real food, since it will be eaten alongside the food, it is considered as food material, and it is mitzdarif to the other food to achieve that again to achieve that kibetza to become tummy. One example of this type of semi-food material is Veha'olol. Now what exactly, my olol, Rabbi Yechen Omar Martako, that's the neck vein, which Rashi says is, 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 is hard, is, is tough, it's not really edible on its own. Rish Lakish Omar Basar Shaplatosi Sakin, he has a whole different approach. He says, no, we're talking about meat, but it's a thin sliver of meat. So when they skin the animals with a knife, was in the midst of separating the flesh, from the skin, the edible from the inedible, and it sort of hopped over, it skipped over, and left out a little sliver here, a little strand of meat there, still attached to the skin. And it doesn't really have chashivo, it doesn't have significance, we'll see later. The obvious question is, look, is it edible or not edible, right? So on its own, it's not, but with real food it is, how do you work that out? We'll get to that later. But firstly, Definition. Olol, according to Rabbi Yechanan, is the neck vein, according to Rish Lakish. The neck uh, sinew, according to Rish Lakish. It's this skipped sliver of meat still on the skin. Mesve, here comes a kasha, there's a pasuk in Eiai, where he was responding to his um, friends who came to console him, to, came to give him chizuk. He says, you're, you're speaking falsehood, you're giving me false uh, inspiration. Meisvei b'ulam atem, look, toifle sheke, Rashi says toifle means mechabra, you're putting together false words, false words of consolation. Roifei elil, kulchem, you're like the one trying to fix the broken elil, this neck, neck uh, sinew that snapped, which you can't, you can't fix it, you can't repair it. Once it gets injured, once it gets snapped, you can't really heal it. So that's how effective, that's how, uh, you know, genuine uh, are your words. Clearly, the word alil here means the neck vein. Bishleim elamanda amar martika, according to Rabbi Yechanan, that alal is this martika vein, hainu delav barafu, that uh, fits well with the pasuk. It's uh, irreparable. Elil elamanda amar basar shabatasi sakin, but according to Rish Lakish. Alil simply means dangling skin, skin which barafu. Of course, you can fix it up. Rashi says sometimes, you know, there's some dangling uh, flesh or skin off a person that could be reattached, you know, restitched, re right? Re glued, right? Barafu. So, why was he indicating that there's no way to heal this? You're right. Ba'alal de Kra, regarding the word alal in the Pasuk, there's no question as to the intent. To kuli amuloi pligi. There's no machlek, all agree. Translation there is the neck vein. He pligi balal de masnisen. The question is only, on the word Alal in our Mishnah, what did the Mishnah mean when it said Alal? This or that? 
Toshma, here comes another riot from the end of our Mishnah. You see, the Tanakama says that the alal material alongside the other semi food materials can be mitzarev to complete the uh, kabetza for Tumas Eichlin purposes. So it's regarded as food in that respect. But let's say it's a dead animal. Will these items be tummy? No. They don't have Tumas Navelo which only applies to purely edible materials, not to these semi-foods. However, Rabbi Yudah disagrees. Tashma Rabbi Daimer, it depends. Halala Machunas, if the fellow actually gather together these uh, little strands of halal, put it together, now he has a, a pile which amounts to a kazayas, that will have to mas nevela as well. Rashi explains because he has now revealed to us that he never intended on just nullifying and leaving these things as part of the skin. He wants them, he likes them, he, he needs them. So if he actually did it consciously, he went and collected it, that indicates that he gives it prominence, gives it chashivas, he regarded, regards it as full uh, food and full uh, uh, meat, and it's called an avela. Right? And therefore, he has uh, accumulated a kazayas at once, Chayav alav, if one eats it, he is liable for nevela. Vamrav Huna, he explains, Vuhusha Kansi, provided that he himself gathered it, as opposed to, you know, if it just happens to be sitting there or some kids did it, it has to be something done with intent and adult awareness. Now, Bishlam al Amr Sakin, let's see how this halacha corresponds to our dispute in terms of what the alal means. So if you say like Rish Lakish, it's a sliver on the skin. Hainu, that would explain. The chayik kazayis machayif. Rabbi does Allah, if you have a kazayis, you're chayif because in reality, it is food material. Unless it was nullified to the skin, you have to sort of undo its status. And in this case, we're indicated just the opposite. So it retains its food, st- food status, even regarding Tumas Nevit. El Mada Omar Martaka. However, if you say the Alal is just that neck vein, Kika Kazai Smayavi, what good is it that he has a Kazai sitting here? How does that change matters? It's inedible. Inedible is inedible no matter how much it is. Mayavi eats, ba- yeah, eats Baham, it's like a piece of wood. Why would it be considered Basar Nevela? You're right, once again. You're right. I'll leave it to Rabbi Yudah. There's no discussion in terms of what Rabbi Yudah meant in his halach. Of course, he was talking about that second definition of alal. Ki pligi, I'll leave the Rabbon. Meaning, theoretically, all agree that alal can mean this or that. It can mean both. I mean, in the Pasuk, it means the neck vein. Rabbi Yudah is clearly referring to the Remnants, the uh, you know the flesh remnants on the on the hide. However, let's go back to the beginning of the Mishnah. Kipli alibe the Rabban, the Rabban amili Tanakam of the Mishnah, who states that uh, alal at most can be considered an accessory to food, and you know regarding tumas oichlin, but not regarding tumas nevel. It's not actually flesh, not actually considered bas. It's bottle, right? So, the question is, what did the Rabbana mean? Rabbi Echon says, it can mean both. It can mean both. And it can mean both versions of Allah. The remnants on the skin and the neck vein. Even that's really considered, you know, pseudo-food regarding Tumas Oichlin. Rosh Lakish disagrees. Right? Rosh Lakish says, no. Neck vein, it's a non-starter. There's no chance that's going to be uh, you know, considered food. Rather, we're talking about those slivers on the skin. Tanakama maintains it could be tummy tumas oichlin. It would be the ads. If he goes and collects it, it could be tumas nevelas as well. So again, keep a little bit of the machlekes, between Rabbi Yechanan and Mishlagash. In defining the word alal, pertains to the Rabbanon only. The Tanakama who says that Alal can have two mas oichlan. Rabbi Yechon, Amar Maratah, Konami Mitzdar, he says not only the slivers of meat on, on the skin, if placed next to food, can be regarded as food entity as well, to get you to that kebetza. Even the Maratah, even that, has the same potential. 
I want to show you by the way, adds, and he says, uh, regarding, um, you know, Tumas Nevela, the skin, the, the flesh, on the uh, remnants on the skin, if you collect it, then it's Tumas Nevela as well. Rishlagash Amar Davka Bosa Shepetosei Saken. Rishlagash disagrees. Tanakama, who says Alal can be a, a Tumas Eichlin, that's strictly the Bosa Shepetosei Saken, the uh, sliver of meat which the knife skipped over. Because ultimately, it's, it's, it's really edible. It's just a question of status. Is it nullified? Is it not? So, it's sort of semi-food at this point, halachically. So, if it's next to real food, it's mitztarif. Avomartikal and mitztarif. No, but the yeah, neck vein, that's totally inedible. has no element of food to it. Okay, so we're good. Bottom line, what is Allah? Well, it depends uh, if you're learning Iyayi, or if you're learning Mishnah, or what are you holding? <laughs> so, in the, in the Pasuk, it's certainly the neck vein which has no remedy. In the Mishnah, well, Rabbi Yuda is certainly speaking about the Bos or Shabbat which was now gathered together to achieve a kazais and has Tumas Nevela. Tanakama, who spoke about Alal being considered part of the larger food entity regarding Tumas Oichlin, well, Rosh Lakish says once again that's only the Bos or Shabbat Sakin, only has that, that has that potential. But not the ve- neck vein. Rabbi Yechon says, well, the neck vein as well. It can be eaten alongside food and has a similar status. Now, going back to the skipped, uh, you know, sliver of meat. Food is food, right? What, what, what do you mean to say that it's not food on its own unless it's meat starved to other foods? Hi, boss, or shall we tell you, suck. Hey, what exactly are we talking about in reference to this meat on the skin? Either chashiv if he had a mind, Okay, I like this. I'm going to have it for my Purim Suda, right? I feel about paying off Shimitami. So even on its own, right? If you have a you know a clump of of, uh, of this of this uh, sliver here, it, it, it amounts to a, a kabeitza. So uh, he relabeled it as food. And that's the Allah when you machshiv something that elevates its status to food. So why do you need other food alongside it to connect to it? I mean, why does he need outside help? To make him into food. Oh, maybe he had no machshava to eat it. So he did not elevate it. It's just sitting there, benign. Okay, so then he nullified it. He considered it part of the hide, which is not edible. It's gone. Bottle. So how could it be considered food? Answer is like this. He really did not have machshava on this particular piece of, of sliver of this of this basar, shapatase sakin, which amounts to less than a kibetza, but it's sitting next to real food. It's part of a larger clump. So we have two pshatim, Rabbi Abin and Rabbi Yasha. Each one said an explanation. Chadam, one explained, Miktsase chishev alav, what happened was that he had a, a full kibetza, a big clump of this, you know, skipped meat on the hide. He decided, you know what, he's going to have part of it. He doesn't need the whole thing, but, you know, part of it, half of it. The other part he just ignored. So the point is, since Rashi says he didn't really specify which one. And the impression bring from an old cloth of Rashi, he explains that even though he... Um, only had a machshav on half, it works on the whole thing. Here, Marshal brings an old cloth from Rashi, he says like this, that once he has a machshav on half of that clump, he says he's gila bedaita, that he's not mevatal the whole thing. Basically, there's two halves. One, let's call it A, and one is B. A, he intended on eating. So that elevates its food. The B is sort of, you know, <laughs> in limbo. Now, he can be pulled both ways. He's right now in a tug of war. He can be drawn after A, because he's the same entity, he's part of the same clump, and if this is food, then this is food. He can be drawn the other way, down to the skin on which he's sitting, right? Which is not edible. It can be bottled to the skin. So, in this type of situation, we say, it's been starved to the food. Once part of that clump has been given machshava of Eichel, likewise, we assume the other part comes along for the ride as well, and also considered Eichel. That's the pshat. The next part is a similar pshat, just a slightly different scenario. 
The other one explained, You have a clump of remnant, uh, meat remnant on the skin. Now part of it was Nashchasa Chai, Rashi said a dog you know, bit the, uh, the animal during its lifetime and dangled this piece of meat off. So it's dangling. And uh, in this case, it's not bottle, it's not stuck to the skin. It's not like bottle, like, you know, when the guy was uh, skinning it and he just left some meat behind and, you know, becomes bottle here. There's no intentional bottle, so it doesn't lose its food status. In contrast to the half a kibetza next to it, which was skipped by the knife. So that became bottle, right? But since it's attached to this non-bottle half, so it gets swept along alongside it and gets drawn along to its, to, to, and given that elevated status, of food as well. And that's what the Mishnah means. Now if you have a little bit of this uh, skipped skin, uh, meat next to a similar meat, which is considered food because it had a machshav or because it was never lost its food status when it was, you know, dangled by the animals. So the other half sort of gets drawn along to it rather than getting pulled back to the skin so that preempts the bittle and you have a full kibetza, which is Medhamit Masech. Tanah we have another Mishnah. A similar discussion in Masechah Staris regarding food items, which are not really food. Not has machartam, the, uh, the beak of the bird, that's the parnaim, the nails. Mitamen, they're considered like an extension of the food alongside them. They're like a yad. Mitamen, they can import tumma from the outside to the food material situated alongside them. Umitamen, likewise, they can send out tumma. Umit starfin. Not only that, they can join together be combined with the food alongside them to achieve the required shiur of kibetz. Why? Because these things, aside from, you know, the fact that they can be used to handle the food next to them, but they're also somewhat edible. Once again, they're not edible on their own, by their own right, but you, you, you tend to eat them together with the meat alongside it. Asks the Gemara hard time, I mean a beak? That's edible, it's balm, it's a piece of wood, it's inedible. Amr Abelaz, or Bechar Tam Tachtam, talking about the lower beak. Tachtanami is bound, the lower beak is also inedible. Amr Papa Tachtan Shin Eliam, talking about this lower, the, the uh, lower um, layer of the upper beak, which is somewhat soft and edible. Super nine, what about the uh, nails? I mean, that's not edible. Amr Abelaz, was speaking about the the ones deep inside, embedded inside the skin, makam shem avlam avlam babasa, the parts that's still inside, it's somewhat soft and somewhat at a karnaim, or at the horns, who eats horns? And our papa, b'makam shechoytchin, once again, not speaking about the hardened part, rather the soft part inside, and the litmus test is, what happens when you cut it? V'yotz mehendam, you cut it and it's bleeding, so you know it's sort of semi-flesh and it's considered as part of the food. Okay, so in summation, we had uh, many examples of materials which are not really technically considered food, unless they're sort of alongside real food, eaten together, uh, 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 that elevates them as well, as an accessory to food, as, you know, and this semi-food now has a dinner food regarding Tumas Eichlin. We had uh, Alal, a couple of, a couple of uh, you know, approaches to that. We had the, the beak, the nails, the horns. Now on to the next part of the mission. There are Tanoim who taught as follows. They learn as follows. Imagine a Yid picks up a kosher knife and does a shechita on, on, on an unkosher animal, on a horse, for the sake of a guy to feed it to a guy. So this is pretty much a review of the Mishnah where we learned that what happens then since it's a Yisrael who's empowered to do Shechita, even though it's a Behemot Meya, but since it's for the sake of a Goy, that Shechita will now transform the horse from a, a horse, from a live horse, from an animal, and render it, give it the status of Oichla food, and it's now open to Tumas Oichan. Even though it's not yet dead, it's still flapping. But since by a Yid, the act of shechita suffices to permit the uh, material. It renders it from animal to food, from vehema to basar. It is now regarded, it is now classified as food material and is open to Tumas Eichlan, but not Tumas Nevelas, until it fully dies. So you need all these conditions to be met for this to work. It has to be a Yisrael doing the shechita, it has to be for the sake of a guy, right, etc. 
or exactly the opposite works as well. <laughs> Imagine a guy does shechita. He can't really do shechita halachically, so the food doesn't become mutter. But he's thinking that he can do it, and he's doing it for the sake of a yisrael on a kosher animal. So in this case as well, once the shechita happens, even if the animal is still flapping and showing signs of hasn't fully expired, it's already considered oichel. And Rashi points out that even though uh, really a guy doesn't have the power to do shechita, but since he's doing it for the sake of Yisrael, to feed Yisrael, who shouldn't be eating it, by the way, but mistakenly, he's thinking that he can eat it, so that transforms the animal into meat, even before it's fully uh, life is fully expired, and it's considered like food regarding Tumas Oichlan. Now, it's Rich Machshava, on condition that it was Machshava, right? In the first case, where the Yisrael shechted the horse to feed the goy. Second case, the goy shechted the goat to feed the Yisrael. That gives it food status. Likewise, it has to get wet. Which is preconditioned for Tumas Eichlin has to get wet from some outside source, Mayim, some water, Makamacher. And the question is, Rashi asks, why water? I mean, what happened to the blood of the Shechitas? He says, in this case, the blood of the Shechitas will not accomplish Hechsher. He goes into the whole discussion that uh, blood of a wound or of a dead animal doesn't uh, count for Hechsher, only the blood of an actual Shechitas, uh, you know, kosher Shechitas, which in this case you don't really have. For two separate reasons, either because it's a horse, a horse <laughs> doesn't have shrita, a uh, lachak shrita, or because it's a guy doing it in the second case. Okay, so again, we have two cases, exactly the opposites, accomplishing a similar feat. In the first case, on account of the person doing the shrita, you see Israel, who can do shritas, even though it's a horse, it still has some validity regarding transforming it to food, and in the second case, exactly the opposite, on account of the animal, this type of animal is suitable for shechita, and therefore shechita done to it, even by a guy, proves transformative with respect to Tumas Eichel. And the question is, why even bother with Heksha? The rule is, only regular foods, you know, need to undergo the Heksha to, you know, open the door for Tumas. But if you have a material which either currently or, uh, not currently, but sooner or later will in itself, proved to be a source of a tumah chamura, a strict tumah, a high level tumah, an ava tumah, which can be metame a person or a kli. So, since it has that strong tumah potential, it doesn't need heksher. It's strong enough on its own, it doesn't need heksher to bring about tumah. Now, this animal, you know, let's just focus on the first case, but really, just for clarity, there are two cases here, right? The yid shechted the horse and the goy shechted the goat. Let's just focus on the first one, but really it applies to both, equally. So the uh, Yisrael did the shechit on the horse. Sure, currently it's not yet fully lifeless. It's not yet an Avela, but very soon, it's going to turn into an Avela. And an Avela generates a very severe tumor. Ask the Gemara, Heksha, why bother with Heksha? Why is that necessary? Soifoy, ultimately, it's going to be the Tami Tumachamura. Something which has that strong tumor ability, doesn't need This is the pasuk regarding hechsher on foods. We compare it to foods. Mazrayim seeds, foods, shein soif on the tumah which don't have the ability to become a high level of tumor to achieve a level of avat tumor. That needs hechsher to give it any tumor. Of course, likewise, any other similar material. Shein soifa the tamatum chaber, which doesn't have the ability for a strong tumor, so rechach needs hechsha before it gets any tumor. But this is going to be an avela. We continue with this question of Atanya. Furthermore, we have a brayso or biyasi mipnei ma amru. Why did the chachamim dictate that nivlas oiftar, a dead kosher bird, which is very metami, a person when a person swallows it, a person becomes tummy, etc. Why does that need hechsha? Tzricha machshava. Sorry, it's Why does it need? Again, he brings a rye from the kosher bird, where it says you don't need achsha. It's Although you need machshava intent, 
Rashi says we're talking in the villages where there aren't that many customers to have these materials. So you have to sort of designate it as food. But ve'enat tzricha echsher, the bird will be matami with an You know why? For that very same reason. Mipnei, we turn to an base, just say, falad, tami to machamur, because it has that severe tumor potential. The same with the shechted horse. It's going to be an avela very soon. Amar chizke, no. It's an avela status. It's not inevitable. Who says it's going to happen? You know, for something to become a miyotami tumas nevela, it has to have a kazayas. Who says you'll ever have a kazayas? This fellow can come and quickly dissect this animal, crumble it up to little crumbs, to less than a, a kazayas. So it will never have tumas nevela. Amar chizke, hoyo v'yachal it can scrape it down, it can grind it up, la amida, pachas and kazayas, and get you slivers, each one less than a kazayas. So since its nevela status is not Guaranteed. So regard it like regular food, and uh, you need hechsher for tumor. Amulet or yirmi or bezera. So, according to Chizkis' approach, the nevela status is not inevitable. So now, when it's in a state of mifarches, it's still flapping. You tell me it's not a nevela, right? Umi yamar Is that true that according to Chizkis, it's not in nevela? This shechted animal, which is not fully expired, is not an avela? We have a discussion. In the case of shochot boshnaim or rivshnaim, we did a proper shechit, they shechted both tubes, or most of them, it's a proper shechit. But I didn't the animal is still flapping. Can a guy eat it? Now, a yid can certainly eat it, because, like we said, shechit is transformative. It turns it into food. It's not even menachai. If it's a kosher shechit, but in this case, we're talking that it's not really a proper shechita. The act of shechita was done, but the animal's a horse, right? So a yid can't eat it. So you don't have that parallel. If a yid can eat it, certainly a guy. But here, a yid can't eat it. It's not going to end up in the kosher bush and shop, right? So now, the question is, can a guy eat it? Or is it considered ever menachai? A limb of a live animal. It's not fully dead. We have machlaikas. Chizkiyo, amar eno leivarim. No, no issue. It's not eivarim. There's no ever menachai here. It's shechted. It's not. It's not chai. Rabbi Yechonomar, yes, no levarim. We do consider like a compilation of limbs, meaning to say there is a and a chai issues here. And the Gemara explains, chiz ki amar in a levarim. Don't worry about even a chai. May say it's that animal. Shechita turned it into food. Rabbi Yechonomar, yes, no levarim. We're concerned about even a chai. It's not fully may say. Lab may say. So clearly, according to chiz he labels it as a dead animal. Dead animal. Even if it was shechted, but shechted horse, if it fully dies, is an avela. Amalasi says it's somewhere in between. <laughs> it's in limbo. Shachat Bashnaim. Um Chaya. It left the Chaya status. It's no longer fully alive, yeah. The Shrita did that. But it's not fully dead. It hadn't yet arrived at Mace uh, territory. So on the one hand, it's not an animal, it's not a live animal, with respect to being immune to tumma. It's, it's food, it's now open to tumas achila, tumas achila. But it's still somewhat alive regarding tumas, and it's no longer, right, it's no longer even menachai, but it's still somewhat alive regarding tumas nevela, which only descends upon it when it's fully, fully expired. Okay, good, let's go back to this discussion. Shachat Bashnaim Rav Shnaim, he did the shechita on the horse, but I didn't still flapping. Chizki Amar Enu Levarim, don't worry about even Achai. Rav Yechon Amar Yesh Levarim. Goy, if he should take from it, he's uh, going to be transgressing. Even Achai. Now, which opinion do we adopt? Amar Rav Lazar, Nakoit Laha Tarechem Yadcha. Adopt Rav Yechon's opinion because there's a brisa that supports it. The Tanur Beishia, I said, Rishi had a brisa like that. The Tanur Beishia. Yisrael Shachat Ben Matmei Lev Kechavim. A Yisrael executed shechita on a horse for a guy. It was a proper shechita, shachat b'shnayim or shnayim, um for chesed, but it's not yet fully expired. Metama tumas oechlin, avle tumas nevelis, right? It has tumas oechlin. It's food, but it's not a nevela. And here comes the punchline. Eiver menachai is still active. Eiver ha-perish mimena, if a limb separates from it, while it's still in its state of limbo, k'perish menachai, as though it's separated from a live animal. Ubas ha-perish mimena, likewise, flesh that separates, k'perish menachai, like, Flesh of a live animal, Basil Ben Noyach. 
in which case it's forbidden for a guy to eat. Even if he waits a couple of minutes until the animal expires, since it was removed from the animal, while it was still technically, halachically alive, it's us forever. That piece is us forever. Now all this is when, a prop, despite the fact that a proper shkita was done, but let's say, even that wasn't done. Shachat by echad. Shachat by echad did only one simon on the horse. Or Rebbe echad, most of it. That's not a proper shkita. That's not transformative. That doesn't change its status. Eina matama tumas oichlan. It's not food. With respect to tumas oichlan. And certainly in Nachra, he just tore the simonim. Certainly it doesn't have any tumma. Ein ba tumma shal klum. There's no tumma there. Until it dies, and then it's an avail, of course. But at this point, it's not. Now, the reverse a case, right? We had two cases, a yid on a horse, a guy on a goat. A guy that shkit on a goat for the sake of Israel has the same status as the yid on the horse. It's not yet fully expired. It's considered food material. But it's not too much of a thing. Likewise, right? The limb removed at this point. As though it's separated from a live being. Likewise, flesh. And a guy can't eat it. Even if he waits, he rips it off now, but he waits. Too late, it's Eivim Nachai. And this all is in line with Rabbi Eichlan, right? That says that there's Eivim Nachai at this point. Now certainly, Shachat Ba Echad or Echad. If the guy only did a, you know, one simon or roiv of that, that's certainly not a shechita. Eina matam to Echlan, doesn't even get to Masa Echlan. And of course, Nachra, if he did Nechira, Nechara, Eima to Meshachum, there's no two. Okay, that pretty much sums up our discussion. So before we conclude the Bryce, let's just make a quick summary. We have an interesting, you know, a, a semi shechita situation, right? So if a yidah shechita on a kosher animal, of course, it proves fully transformative, and the animal is now considered food material, regarding all halachas. It's, it's not even menachai. It's it's tumas oichlin, etc., etc. But if there was a crossover, yid shechta the horse for the guy, or the guy shechta the goat for the yid. So in the first case, what's missing? It's the wrong animal. But it's a proper ma'isa shechita, so it has some effect. Second case, just the opposite. The animal's fine, but the person doing it is not authorized to do shechita. So once again, it doesn't really accomplish a full shechita, but it's somewhat transformative. It turns into eichel, regarding tumas eichel, not yet tumas nevela. Regarding even nachai, koter bechon, and still considered even nachai until it's fully expired. Continues the brayso. What if there was one act of shechita accomplished jointly by the going by the yid? Well, it depends. Who did the critical part? Suppose the guy did a shechita in a manner which doesn't make it a trefa. Not a serious cut, as she says. He only cut half the simon. So the two simon, we cut half of the first. This theoretically would not be considered a life-threatening injury regarding Hilchas trefa, right? Uba Yisrael V'gamra comes along the yid and completes the job. Kshayra, it's fine. Because he pushed it over the, uh, the finish line. Shachat Yisrael, on the other end, Yisrael begins the Shechita. Be'in b'makim sh'a Yisrael s'atreifa. Whether he did a, a serious cut that would render the animal a treifa. For instance, he did most of the first two, and then the guy came and finished the second two. Or, u'be'in b'makim sh'a Yisrael s'atreifa. Certainly if the uh, cut of the yid was not a serious cut, it was only half the first two, and then the guy comes and completes it, it's considered the act of the guy. It doesn't qualify as shechita regarding permiss- permissibility of consumption. So, now the Brasa continues with another interesting point, which we already, we already had in the Gimel. If a person wishes to have a part of the animal, to consume a piece of flesh that was removed before the animal fully expired. Which is which has you know, health benefits, as we're going to see later. How do you accomplish that? The answer is right after shechita, quickly clip off a piece of meat from the neck area, which is easily accessible, and put it on the side. Take a kazais of meat. We base shechita so from the neck area. We did the shechita. Salt it well. Wash it well, but don't eat it yet. Now minat Torah, this is really okay. It's not even menachai, because as we explained. Since the Yisrael did the Shechita on a kosher animal, it's fully transformative. It's not considered meat. Because 
Klal Yisrael were commanded, as soon as you do the Shechita, you eat. The act of Shechita turns it into food. It changes its status dramatically, it's considered food. Unlike by the Goyim, who don't have a concept of Shechita. So in their situation, a Shechita would not permit it for them, unless the animal fully dies. Shechita is not a it's not a player for them. It's not a factor. It's either alive or dead. So until it fully dies, it's not mutter for a guy. But in this case, Rashi says, once something becomes mutter for us, it's mutter for them. It can't be more you know, severe than us. So in this case, it would be okay for a Yisrael or a guy. Umam tenlat shetisi nafsha. Rashi adds, this is based on the Gemara in Sanhedrin. Midir Abbanon, loisoychu al adam. You're not meant to eat of an animal while it's still exhibiting some signs of life. So he has to simply wait until it fully expires. And then he can have that original piece of meat which was clipped off during this sort of limbo stage. Vo'oichlein can eat that piece of meat, whether it's a year or a goy, it doesn't matter. Echad ev kechavim, echad yisrael, mutar ma'yadik can eat it. Mis hayeile l'rabi. L'rabi de bar'avin. This price, which gives us this uh, instruction and uh, you know, is a writer of Ide bar'avin, who likewise tells us that it's permissible. Alright, don't rabi de bar'avin, rabi tzav, rash, and alright, sir. Shayavri. Person wants to uh, gain, you know, the health benefits. Wants to get strong from this chaytach, kadai esbosar, beshchita, right? Again, moichal yafa yafa, metechal yafa yafa, metashal zinavsha, and then he can have it, echal yafa yafa, yafa yafa yafa. Okay, by Rebbe Laz. So we learned that if a Yisrael shechts a horse, it does have some transformation effect, right? He makes it open to Tumas Eichlin, as we learned. Shehaba. Dorasba Mao. Suppose he uh, he waited, he paused in the middle of the shechita, which invalidates the shechita. So physically it was an act of shechita, but halachically there was some impediments here, which would invalidate the shechita regarding a Yisrael consuming that meat. It's not kasher shechita. Dorasba he pressed down too hard. Mao. What do you say in this case? Amalei Usaba said this elder turned to him he says Hachim Rabbi Yechanan let me quote to Rabbi Yechanan he says Tzricha Hechsher Shechita Gebeh Matar in order for the Shechita of the Yisrael on the horse to have any effect it has to have Hechsher Shechita proper Shechita like a proper Shechita on a kosher animal now what's this elongated you know phraseology Hechsher Hechsher Lamai what do you mean Hechsher Amalei Usaba said this elder turned to him he says you have to check the knife before like any other Shechita I mean you have to have the physical characteristics of, a, of an active Shechita a proper knife, a proper slit, without pausing, without a prop. With well, the only issue being the type of animal. If that's the only issue, then this halacha applies. But if the act of shechita on its own was deficient, then it's a non starter. I have a new question regarding this uh, shechted horse. While still flapping before it fully expires, it's regarded as food, right? Now we know that an animal, a live animal, has something inside of it. Balua, something buried inside its system. Swallowed a ring or whatever. That item is immune from contracting too much from the outside. It's protected within a live being. It's called balua. It's in its own environment. It's protected from any outside influence, right? What about something inside this shechted horse? While still not fully expired. It's still somewhat alive, right? Can it protect something which is embedded inside it from Tumma? Because it hadn't fully died yet, it's not a Nevela, right? It's considered Tumas Eichlam, not Tumas Nevela. So, how do you treat it in terms of Balua? Amalaisi says, How can you suggest that it would protect its uh, Balua? Amalim, look, Metama Tumas Eichlam, we know that it's Metama Tumas Eichlam. Umat Salas, you expect it to protect the Balua? It's a piece of meat. I'm like, hey, no metamatumas nevelus. Well, it tats. We'll go the other way. Well, well, you know, it's not going to be metamatumas nevelus until it fully dies. So that indicates that it's somewhat live. Well, it tats, and it can't. It shouldn't protect. <laughs> so whichever way you go, we're stuck. I'm rabbi. You have to be machmer. Hey, no matzelus ala bluim shebaseicha because the metamatumas seichon since it has to maseichon that gives it an element of food. It's like a ring stuck in a piece of meat. There's no protection there. It's not Balua and a live being. 
Furthermore, if a person improperly interacts with this animal in this state, Chayv is liable for the uh, Isra of Revia. Because it's still regarded as somewhat as a live entity. Since it's not a generator of Tumas Nevela, means it's not fully dead. It's regarded somewhat as a Chay, regarding this halacha as well. Okay, in summation, we have two sections of today's daf. We discussed items which are pseudo foods, which are messiah to foods alongside them. One of which is the alal, the beak, the uh, bottom portion of the nails, and of the horns. Very interesting gemara regarding a pseudo shechita, uh, Israel shechting a horse for the sake of a guy, or vice versa, a guy shechting a goat for the sake of a yid. It turns it from a live animal to a piece of meat with respect to Tumas Eichlin. Even though it's not yet fully dead, uh, which would generate too much nevela. Regarding Ebem Nachai to a goy at this point, Rebbechan says it is considered somewhat alive and Ebem Nachai still applies. An interesting remark regarding uh, clipping off this uh, basar, Kaidan Shetes and Nafsha, with the need to wait until later to actually eat it. And we concluded that the, uh, this animal in limbo has all kinds of interesting um, manifestations. Eichlin and Nevela and Ebem Nachai we discussed, but it also uh, pertains to the Balua and to Haroi Vachayv. All the best to you. Psurus Tevas. Thank you so much for joining. Hatzlach Harab.